less than an eye, really, up until the last few years. Um, that has changed. Um, there's some of those parts that I did that with. Uh, looks like it's stuff that's right up your alley. Aloha! Welcome to the Dallas Card Show. It's Wake and Break. Wake and Break Sports Cards at gmail.com. New channel on YouTube. Look out for us. We're excited to add value to the hobby. We absolutely love and appreciate everybody. And we want to come down to the show and make it a great day. And here we are, they're good friends. We want to say thank you and appreciate you. And again, it's Wake and Break Sports Cards at gmail.com. You'll find us on YouTube. And here we're doing a $5 raffle. We're giving away a Zion case, a top loader case, Zion slab case. We have three bags. We'll have a couple going out tomorrow night at trade night. It's a Zion bag here, the Zion slab case bag, and of course, the Big Daddy uh, Xbox X. Love and appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hello, Mike. Would you like to show everybody what you picked up today? Well, sure. I can't remember which pocket I have it in. Yeah. A little Look 52 Bowman Mickey Mantle in a very, very beautiful PSA 3. Perfect kind of card for me, right? I try to mix grade and value, right? So that's always what I'm looking for. And try to find the right formula, the right mix. And it's hard. I almost bought a four for a thousand more than a thousand dollars more, and this three looks nicer than that four because it was in an old holder, you know. And so I'm thrilled to death. I'm Congratulations, sir. He's down to two more mantles for his mantle run now. 52 tops, 53 tops. Can we make it happen today? No. No. <laughs> Fresh out. Tune in next time for Mike's mantle adventures. Wallet is empty. All right, welcome everybody to my Dallas Card Show recap video. Uh, this is going to be a weird one because some of the cards that I picked up, I can only describe to you because I no longer have them. I, they were then used in later deals throughout the show. Not something I typically do. I like to usually bring everything back with me, but there was just times where opportunity struck and... When opportunity strikes, you have to seize it. So I'm just going to kind of go through and show these, not necessarily in like the order of, I think, like the coolest, but more so just how it went down for my own sake here. So we're going to start off with this one. Let me take it out of the team bag. This is an example that I see of dealers when they're trying to look up prices on eBay when eBay fails them. And I'll, I'll go on record by saying this is that the completed sales feature is a fantastic resource and tool. I think most people in the hobby use it today. However, it has its limitations and it's one of those things where it's like any kind of software that you may use in, in any other instance where like an Excel or something where it's only as good as the information that you put into it. So why I say all that is because on this Glaber Torres here, this is the 2018 Tops short print. Uh, in Series 2, they released two short prints to cards 688 and 699 in the set, or 698 and 699, I should say. Acuna Bat Down is, of course, 698. But the less talked about one here is this Glaber Torres. And I get it. He hasn't done the best in recent seasons. But this ended up selling for $2. And the reason, because the complete set versions, I guess, in PSA 9s were going for around 5 or 6 bucks, which does sound correct. But this was mistaken for that. So it was marked for $2. So I said, yeah, I'll go ahead and take that. And that's just one of those where, uh, you know, that card was extremely hot upon release. And then even after the 18 season and somewhat after the 2019 season, still incredibly popular too. So... That one was uh, just one of those no-brainer type of pickups for me. So throughout the early portions of the show, that was really it. I didn't do too much in terms of picking up things. I was actually picking up stuff for a lot of friends. But then things really started to pick up kind of after uh, the lunch break afternoon session. So give you a quick glance of a couple of things I picked up. Uh, the next one was actually in one of the auxiliary rooms, and it is this awesome five-way relic card. This was a trade. Uh, I traded away my Hank Greenberg autograph as well as a Damian Willard autograph I had brought. 
There was a, a Peyton Manning patch involved in it and a Sean Kemp autograph, and I was able to secure this plus cash on my end. It is from 2003 SP Authentic. Shout out to my Bonds and McGuire collector friends. It's a five-way relic of Ted Williams, Mickey Mantle, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, and Barry Bonds. So Williams, McGuire, and Sosa are all game-used uh, jersey pieces, which is pretty neat, especially for Williams. A lot of times on the pre-war players or even you know your 50s players, you're going to see bat relics, but not this one. Um, the mantle is a bat relic. It does have the Yankee stamp in it. I don't really like that, but it's whatever. It is a game-used bat, though. And then the Bonds, you can see down here, this is a piece of a base used in Barry Bonds' 500th home run game uh, from April 18th, 2001, which I just think this is incredibly cool. Um, I brought this out several times just to potentially see if it was something of interest in a trade. I was very hesitant to move it, and I, I told a lot of dealers that I'm just, I really don't want to move this unless you absolutely blow me away. And, of course, I still have it because of that. So, there you have it. Um, there was a deal that I made for another trade where I traded away a Michael Porter Jr. autograph that I had for a Alex Bregman 1-1 one -one autograph from Transcendent and a Randy Rosarena 5-star autograph. And that came next. I'm not showing you those because, again, both of those cards were moved in later deals. I actually sold the Rosarena probably... It might have only been like 30 minutes later uh, as part of another deal that I was working on, uh, a dealer who was interested in one of my Justin Jefferson autographs. Um, so kind of just kind of floated around there, sold a few cards and went back into the other room and I was looking at a card for one of my friends and then I was looking at a couple of cards for Mike for his four decades set. And then I stumbled across this, and I knew I had to have this. So I traded away my uh, one of my Mahomes cards that I had actually just gotten in a trade earlier in the week. So just, you know, keeping it moving here. Uh, I had to add some cash, of course, but I was able to land this Bryce Harper 2012 Prism, the first year of Prism, and it is a silver. If you haven't seen what the uh, trouts of these go for, it's a pretty penny and uh harper i would say probably is the second best card in that set or at least i would argue that um trout i know that 2012 is his rookie year but he has all of his rookie cards in 2011 harper is not the same case he has his silver here in 2012 and i just love the first year prism stuff um i think this is an extremely overlooked card i know a lot of harper cards i think in general are overlooked in the hobby but uh, I get it, it's Panini, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I personally love that set. I have some fond memories of opening up the boxes when I was younger too, so could not be more thrilled uh, to have picked that one up. Also in the auxiliary, uh, excuse me, auxiliary room, I had a lot of luck just <laughs> finding stuff in there. A couple little cheap slabs here. These will probably be going into a whatnot sale. I'm planning one for Wednesday night, a little slab sale, so that should be fun. You can Go check out my page, Triple Crown 24. But Trout, first year of Gypsy Queen, CSG 9. Saw a lot of CSG slabs at the show today. Thought it was uh, interesting to see all of the variety of slabs out there. And you can't go wrong with a Hall of Fame rookie, Smoltz 89 tops as well. So just some, you know, your bread and butter type of pickups. Uh, just kind of going through here, I'm actually just kind of tossing through my stack, looking at everything, and I don't see anything else that I really picked up on day one uh, that was for me anyways, except for this last card here. This was one of my lone value box finds. I, You guys know I love my value boxes, and I've had some pretty good success with them. Not so much this time around. There's just a lot of stuff that it was kind of priced at, or I would price it at for my own value boxes, and when that happens, it's kind of a, an impasse where it's not really anything that jumps out at me. This one did, though. It's a Tatis Blue Refractor, number to 150 for 5 bucks. I'll, I'll take that any day. That one was one of those. I'm like, all right, no matter what, I'm just going to go ahead and grab that. Uh, final pickup of the day. This is one that I'm going to put away for a while into my little vault. It's a 2010 Playoff Contenders, the year before it became Panini Contenders, Earl Thomas Rookie Ticket Autograph, of course, main member or one of the main members of the Legion of Boom Super Bowl champion Seahawks team. 
Uh, very interested to see how things progress going forward. The players that were playing or had rookies, rookie cards during the contenders era. I know that it might be coming to an end when the Fanatics deal takes over, but uh, contenders is one of my favorite products. And I've always loved the rookie ticket autographs. This one was under $100, and I highly doubt that you could even buy half of a box for that. So I'll take a slab to one of who I think will be a future Hall of Famer for that price. I just, it, it was really cool, so I wanted it, and I picked it up, uh, figured why not. So we move into day two, and I was pretty satisfied with how day one went. Uh, I picked up a lot of great cards for some friends. I actually left the show with more cash than I had came in with just from all the trading and even a few sales as well, which was, you know, it's a nice feeling. It doesn't usually work out that way when you walk into a show looking to buy. Uh, that actually ended up happening on day two, but not until like a last minute Hail Mary uh, sale. So I started off day two of a pickup of a Mahomes Hollow Heroes uh, case hit insert out of Illusions Football. And I ended up throwing that in as an ancillary piece in a deal. Uh, with my CD Lamb 2 of 2 snakeskin prism uh, that I sold towards the end of the show on Saturday. So that's also why I am not showing that to you. But those cards, if you want to go check it out on my uh, Twitter, at it's Triple Crown, ITS Triple Crown, you'll see the photos of everything that I had on day one. So those cards are, are pictured there because I still have them, uh, except for the Arosa Arena. Unfortunately, that one you will not be able to see. Uh, but day two, it just... It seemed like things really started to click. They started slow, and then, you know, when you're hot, you're hot. And uh, it started off with some some digging through the value boxes and some deals that didn't necessarily work out, but some solid value box finds, a little Wander Franco Refractor for $8. A lot of people were charging, like, $10 for base inserts and just, you know, standard base cards from the various Bowman products. So I was more than happy to find a Refractor for that. This is probably one of my favorite underrated pickups of the day. It's an Aaron Donald rookie out of Topps Valor, one of my favorite Topps football products that they produced back in the day, especially the 2012 release. Uh, rookie, the Courage Parallel number to 399. This was $5, and just he's the greatest defensive player of his generation. I will gladly debate that with anyone, uh, but it's just cool to, to pick that up for 5 bucks. I figure why not. It's actually in pretty decent shape too. A lot of those have chipping issues and uh, that one did not. So a couple of little uh, other ones here, a little Willie McCovey gold label relic. These are actually pretty tough to find. I know it's number to 50, so it makes you think, oh, it's a relic number to 50, but uh, you're not guaranteed to get one of those in a case of gold labels. So you never know. All my Cardinals fans out there will like this one from Elite Extra Edition. Not the craziest product in terms of secondary market values, but a really sweet, uh, thick patch of Jordan Walker. Fantastic prospect. And it was stickered at 20 bucks. I figured I could talk the dealer down a little bit more, and I was pretty content. I think that one was a, ended up being like 10 bucks, and that's just one of those that I'll gladly take a flyer on for 10 bucks. Same thing with this one here. This one ended up actually being probably closer to five. Uh, Victor Acosta from Elite Extra Edition, still has a Dominican League prospect there, but one of the more sought after names in 2021 Bowman Chrome. And of course, little Ronnie, pink. That one potentially going to the whatnot sale as well. We'll see on that one. Depends how I feel. Uh, so I went into the other room, just a couple more value box finds. Xavier McKinney, this is a guy who actually get asked about a little bit on whatnot. Um, I can't say I'm too familiar with him, but I do get asked about him a lot. And then Antonio Gibson, who had actually a really solid season for Washington this year, RPA out of limited to 49. Um, so I was able to bundle this stack with, uh, with Mike's Jack Morris autograph, if you checked out his video, for 20 bucks. And I mean, like, this card alone, like... If you said that this one was stickered at 20 bucks, I would say, okay, yeah, I believe you on that one. So to get all three of them and, and help out Mike too was, you know, everybody wins in that situation. Last little value box pickup. This was with another trout that I found that will be going to a friend, but it's the international or hometown, depending on where the player was born at from 2013 Bowman. 
Always love those. Wish Bowman would bring that back. That one was bundled with, well, like I said, one more trout, and then one of the slabs. So, showing off some of these slabs here. It's a Christian Santana 2019 Bowman Sterling. I believe that was the first year they brought it back for the first time since like 2013 or 2014. Uh, these are numbered to 10, these uh, black atomics. It's a PSA 9, 9 on the auto as well. Uh, why it's a 9 on the auto, I think it's because he kind of like messed up a little bit there, it looks like, when he was signing the card. But, I mean, this ended up being like $10. So <laughs> I never wanted to those that like, yeah, I'll, I'll take a flyer on it for 10 bucks. Why not? Um, so can't go wrong with that. That is the year of his first Bowman as well, which is nice. That is something that I look for if I am going to pick up a Sterling autograph, just because it's nice to have that uh, continuity. Another uh, combination purchase. I was able to, this one was stickered at 35, but because of the other card that I bought for a friend, I was able to knock this down to 15 for myself. Justin Jefferson, uh, 2020 Prism Cello. These things are like 40 to 50 bucks alone right now. You only get three of these red, white, and blues. And Jefferson is one of the top rookies. I would say he's definitely top five from that product, uh, in my opinion. Just absolute stud wide receiver in the CSG 9 holders. So, I mean, I don't even know if you could get this graded if you factor in shipping and supplies to get it <laughs> sent into CSG plus the wait time. Like, yeah, I'll go ahead and take that for 15 a few more cards here. Uh, this one was kind of one of these little uh, one of ones that the dealer pretty much talked himself into a sale on this one for me because I walked up to his table and he was having a conversation with someone. I was just going through his slab box very patiently and he just busts out and says like, by the way, anything in there, I'll take a third of the price off the sticker for you. But as soon as he said that, I got very motivated very quickly to keep digging. Uh, so I found this Bichette Chrome Refractor. He's also there with Anthony K. Um, PSA 9. This is number 2571. As you can see there on the back. And this ended up being 30 bucks, which I mean, if you factor in the cost of grading, even when it was when it was slabbed there, I would guess it was around the $15 card mark with PSA, if I remember that part, part of the timeline correctly. Um, but these boxes are still over $100 and you may pull like one of these refractors in the box and there's I think a hundred players on the uh, Chrome and Chrome refractor checklist. So uh, to get Bichette for the cost of essentially a, a couple hobby packs, even, you know, maybe even a quarter of a hobby box. It just, it makes sense to me. That's really the way I've been viewing it. Wax prices. I don't think it really uh, correlated with the singles market. I think a lot of the wax out there is still, very up there uh, compared to what the singles are going for right now but when that happens it just means that it's it's more favorable I think for the singles um, either it means that the wax is a little bit too high the singles are a little bit too low or perhaps it's somewhere in between and most of the time it, it probably is somewhere in between I'm going long-winded here here's a Joey B uh, Chronicles rookie I was super thrilled with this trade this was like one of the last ones I did on the day I traded away my BAM out of Bio Genesis PSA 10. One of the ones that I bought it at a price that I thought was, you know, pretty decent when I first bought it. And I've started to kind of regret it since then. I kept bringing it out. And there's a lot of Genesis cards out there. A lot of people who are kind of eyeballing it. But uh, thankfully, I ran into a Miami Heat fan. I told him I was from Cincinnati. When I see that, people assume I'm a Bengals fan. I'm, I wish that was the case. Unfortunately, I'm not. You guys know who I'm a fan of. But... Joey B, uh, this is out of Chronicles, number to 199 SGC 10. So we did a straight up swap for that, uh, which is always fun to just do a one for one trade. So I don't think I'd rather have a, a numbered Joe Burrow, uh, you know, rookie year card rather than a Bam out of Bio Genesis, as much as I love the Genesis, but I do like Burrow more. And he's a bit of a local interest. And then we come to the granddaddy of them all. Um, Undoubtedly, this is in the top two trades that I've ever made uh, in terms of what I got back from it. Number one, I would say, is probably still the Trout 2012 printing plate, but this one, you could definitely argue, is up there. 
And it required me to kind of give up what I would call the king's ransom. That's how I described it to my friend Ed Weskergriff. As you guys, you guys are well familiar with Ed. And if you are familiar with Ed, then you'll know he's a big Juan Soto fan. And you'll see where this is going. Um, I saw this card. I've never seen this in person before. I have seen a different parallel in person once, but really they don't pop up too much. Let me just show you what it is rather than you staring at a blank screen here. It is the Topps Chrome Update X-Fractor. Now right away you might be thinking, why is this such a big deal? You know, these X-Fractors, you get 10 of them in a mega box. And that is true in regular Topps Chrome. In Topps Chrome Update though, back in 2018, the X-Fractors are numbered to 99. So they're pretty tough. Um, there is one X-Fractor uh, for everybody on the checklist, on a 100-card checklist. And your odds of pulling them, they probably fall maybe only one or two in a case of cellos or a, a case of mega boxes. They don't sell those by the case, of course. But uh, when they would be packed out at your uh, local Target or Walmart or wherever you may buy them at. So uh, extremely tough odds. To pull this one here I kind of looked it over for the longest time and uh, the, the set is very notorious for grading well so to get an 8.5 on this is actually exceptionally rare um, not maybe for the right reasons on, on a grade usually you're looking at a higher grade and that being exceptionally rare this one is a bit of a lower grade so Funny enough, the surface, which is typically your biggest issue with these cards, is a 9.5 on this one. And it checks out, too. There's no, like, really deep print lines on it, which is really nice. Um, that's actually something that I would really look for in, in buying this card. Centering is a 9. I think that is a bit harsh. The W is just a little bit cut off here. But if this was PSA or even SGC, they would not dock me for this, um, just from my experience grading these and seeing these be graded. If you look at the back, and you probably saw this when I turned it over earlier, there's just like a little hint of white on the on these corners here, which is why I think I got a nine. Uh, these are these are nine corners with PSA or even SGC, I would say. So I, I think that's fair. The edges though are extremely interesting. So it's an eight, and I've had several people look this over with me now. And on the top edge, you can't even pick it up on camera, which I think benefits me. But it appears to have a bit of a peel effect. And part of that is because of the X-Fractor pattern. Uh, you can see here the way that it was cut off is that the squares really just start up at the top again. So what that happen, what happens with that is that it kind of gives it the look that it's been peeled over. Because naturally we see these squares and it makes it appear like, okay, this is going to continue over and it's going to fold over onto the next edge. But that's not the case. So it's a bit of an optic illusion, or optical illusion, I should say, on this card. Uh, now, is there some edge issues there? Yeah, there is, but I don't think I would give this an 8 if it, if it was an edge issue. So what is the plan with this one? Well, I am going to crack it and send it to PSA. Um, the plan right now is to ask for a minimum grade of an 8. I'm very confident it will be an 8. Will it get to a nine? I'm fairly, I would, if you, you know, had to tell me right now, what is your answer? I'll say yes, it will get a nine. Uh, if it came back an eight, I wouldn't be shocked. Does it have a shot at a 10? Unless something gets overlooked, there's no shot at a 10. But uh, for this card, kind of, like I said, I, I probably gave a little bit too much on my side, but these things are rare. I was not going to get caught up on that. I don't know when I was going to see another one of these again. And this is just one of those that it just spoke to me as soon as I saw it in the case. I I felt like I had to work out a deal for it when the dealer gave me his number. And sure enough, it is mine. So that was my Dallas Card Show recap. I want to thank everyone uh, who I got to meet during the show. I got to meet Dr. Beckett for the first time, which was pretty cool. Uh, I ran into Derek Holland, which was also pretty cool. And then ran into several members of the community and they know who they are. And you probably saw some of them on video or saw me in their videos. Uh, and all the dealers were fantastic as well. Just a lot of great conversations. Even when there was no deals going down, just a lot of people having fun chatting. And I, I just love the atmosphere. I can't wait to come back again. That was my long-winded recap of the March 2020, Dallas 2022, excuse me, Dallas Card Show. 
Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback in the comments section down below. Be back next week with some more content. New podcast episode for sure dropping on Thursday. Probably have some more fun stuff like a PSA reveal for you as well. So until then, take care, stay safe, be kind.